Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. You know, uh, I took a, a quick, I took a three-day break, four-day break. I feel feel rejuvenated. I feel better. You know, I normally do a video every day. I actually ain't, i am be honest, I ain't read the Bible in three days. You know, I took a break. You know, sometimes you feel like you, you've been praying and praying. You got to let the Lord work and do what he does. Because sometimes we'll spend so much time praying and reading and praying and praying. And we forget to sit back and let God do what he do. And sometimes he said he'll give you rest. So when he gives you rest, get rest. But don't stay restful too long. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to read from John chapter 14, starting at verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. So how do you show that you love Christ and you are a follower of Christ? You keep his commandments. Judas said unto him, not as scary, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto me, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to you, your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I live with you, my peace I give it to you. Not as the world giveth peace, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you will rejoice because I said I go unto the Father. For my Father is greater than I. And I have told you before it come to pass, that when it come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so do I. Arise, let us go hence. Wow, people. Very simple. Very quick. Very to the point. Jesus Christ tells us very simply. Straightforward. There's no way around it. If you love him, you keep his commands. First, let's remember something that Jesus said. In the, beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. Who's the Word of God? A lot of people always get this confused. Well, that's the Old Testament. Who's the Old Testament? That's the Old Testament. That's the Old Testament. I get so tired of hearing that. That's the Old Testament. But Jesus Christ is the Word of God. He's the intercession. He's been the intercession since the beginning. He's been the one who come between us and God since the beginning. Now, if you love me, you keep my words. Now, in one of the book of the prophets, in a book of him, he said, I will pour my spirit out on their hearts, right? He also said, I'll give you the, the comforter who will bring all things, remember, will teach you all things, right? So if you live for God, you need the Holy Spirit. Why? He said, the prince of this world are coming. So if you ain't got the Holy Spirit, you are most likely are going to be under the, guide, the gaze or the guidance of the evil one. And there are so many people under the guidance of the evil one this day and age. It's ridiculous. The more you deny God, the more the devil got opportunity to come into your heart. Ask Judas. You see, Judas, Judas had chance after chance to do right by God. To do be right, to do the right by Jesus, his son. And every chance he got, he got basically stabbed him in the back. Now, me and my brothers in Christ last Friday was talking about how Judas, like Satan, has to have a vessel. Well, God works through vessels too, but Satan has to have a vessel to work through. 
Now, one thing you're going to remember real closely about when Judas betrayed Jesus this last time for the pieces of silver that were sitting at the table. And right then, Satan entered into him. They said, whatever you do now, do it. Whatever you do, do it now. And Satan entered into him, then he was led away to go finish the job he had started when he started working with Satan. Well, he got in cahoots with those who was going to betray Jesus Christ. You understand? You see, that's why they say God knows the hearts. He knows the hearts, people. He knows the hearts. I was watching the Jeffrey Dahmer special. Most Christians, like, you shouldn't watch that. Some kept pushing me to watch it. I never knew towards the end of the his life cycle that he supposedly got baptized and gave his life over to Christ. You see, they said, that's all you got to do, right? You understand? I don't know. He did it according to the, to the show. Who are we to judge, right? That's what we love to say. If the word says it, that's how it works. But he did a lot of evil things. You see, and it was certain parts of the show that showed you a little about why he was doing what he was doing. But if you ain't spiritual, you missed it. At his grandmother's house, his grandmother opened up a door and had a shrine to Lucifer. They showed it very quick. He worshiped the prince of this world. But he come to find out in a video, he later out find out, he said he told the people, he was like, when I was young, I went to Halloween. Oh, Lord. He said, I, I dressed up as the devil and I took interest in him. And after that day, I started following after Lucifer. After that day, he started following after Lucifer, after dressing up as a devil. If you love you, you keep my man, know that God's before me. But God can change any man. Don't get me wrong. He can change any man, but they got to want to be changed. I watched another movie called Father Stu, a man that was an atheist, didn't believe in God, don't know what the reason was, maybe because he lost his brother, but come to find out, he they had a, a few experiences. He didn't kill anybody, but he lived through a, a life filled without God. But he gave his life to God and decided to become a priest. And when he decided to become a priest, he was a strong man. He was a boxer. Ran every day, was in the best shape of his life. Then had a car accident, an accident right after he got baptized, had a car accident. Wow. And he, he was okay, he thought. The next thing you know, his muscles started deteriorating. And he's like, why, Lord? After he gave his life to God, why are you going through so much things? But he started to embrace the fact of the suffering part of being a Christian. But when all else fails, he thought he wasn't going to become a priest then. Because he couldn't walk, he couldn't do everything, the rites of the Catholic Church correctly. But God made it so he became a priest still. He said, my sheep know my voice and I'm known on my sheep. And my sheep know my name. But if you watch this story of Jeffrey Dahmer, his grandmother was trying to encourage him to go to church constantly. He was like, no, but you never really knew the reason why he said he wasn't going to go to church. But when you found out about the shrine, you knew why. He was under the sway of the devil. And when people are under the sway of the devil, they do evil things. It goes for me, you, everybody else. Everybody's not serial killers. Everybody's not murderers. His commandment says, thou shalt not murder. But I was looking at it. I was like how he met his end and how he met his demise. I tell people a saying. I tell people something. You know, everything you do comes with consequences. Even though God wipes your sin away. The one thing about it, the people you hurt, they still remember. And some of them may not be god fearing Some of them may never forgive. But the thing is, even if you have done an evil deed, it's about your redemption, about you giving your life to Christ and changing your, making, putting a little leaf on your life. Now, if they don't forgive you after what you've done, it doesn't have anything to do with you. That has something to do with them. And a lot of people don't understand. They're they mad at this part right there, that Jesus is so graceful, that the God is so full of grace and mercy, that he'll even allow someone like Jeffrey Dahmer to come to him. You know, the thing is, if we believe, 
We got to believe such stories like this. But you know it's Hollywood. They don't tell the whole truth. Nothing's with the truth. But the way they put it was, he gave his life over to Christ. And that's fine with me. If he did it out of sincerity of heart, God knows his heart. He'll join God and Jesus in heaven. When he come back, he will. A lot of people are going to be surprised. A lot of people you think, take Judas. Walk side by side with Jesus the whole time. When he was walking, Judas, Judas was one of his disciples the entire time. All the way up to the end, to his betrayal. Until Jesus said, whatever you're going to do, do it now. He was his disciple the entire time. The thing is, people, everybody's life's different. Everybody's life goes through different things. You know, some people come to Christ early. Some people come to Christ late. Father Stu, after he became a Christian, gave his life to Christ. His father was an atheist. His father gave his life to Christ. Even the one that supposedly kills Jeffrey Dahmer was supposed to be a Christian. Most people are like, he couldn't have been a Christian. But he said some things like, I'm the vengeance of the Lord and this and that. But the thing is, people, I don't know. I ask myself a lot of questions in regards to my faith. And I know in the Old Testament, God used men a lot of times to execute vengeance. Maybe that was his final test to see if he's truly a Christian. Because the guy asked him before he killed him, is it true? Basically like, are you a Christian? Did you give your life to Christ? And he did. And then he killed him. Maybe that was his testament. You know, everybody has a testament. Who gives their life to God. People always bring up the, the thief on the cross. They bring him up all the time. Like how did the thief on the Christ cross show? How did he do any works? He did. He confessed that Christ was Lord. In front of everybody out there. He didn't deny him like the other one did. He confessed that Christ was Lord. He did it all in one brief U-turn right there. In the faith of face of many. You see, I don't know how God works all the time. And I, I, I actually don't know how God works at all. When you think you know something, you don't know nothing. That's why we're supposed to forgive people. That's why we never give up on people. Somebody had to keep coming to the church to try to, I mean, coming to the prison to try to reach Jeffrey. He was trying to, God was trying to reach for him the entire time he was on this earth. And no telling how many others he reached for. It took Father Stu to get hurt and give his life to Christ in order for his father to come to Christ. You see, sometimes people, you got to understand you are one of his sheep and you are one of the sheepfold, but how did this got to do with keeping his commandments? All right, people. When you get your life over, you make changes in your life. You do the things that please him to the Lord. He say he'll wipe away your sins. But you know what Christians will be like? It's no way he wiped away Jeffrey Dahmer's sins. How evil he was. We are all evil. We are all sin that falls short of the glory of God now. We all ain't serial killers though. But we all do things we shouldn't. With it, we with our mouths, we bless God and curse people. But nobody wants to talk about that. Some people don't want to talk about the hatred that's in their heart. You got to understand, when he started giving his life over to Satan, you know they never showed the scene when he dressed up as a devil? I wonder why. Because they don't want you to stop doing Halloween. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. It's kind of weird. This, this documentary releases right in October in the month of Halloween. But the, one of the most important details was when he went out there and he embraced a false deity through a costume. <laughs> through a costume, he let the devil in. Wow, so you can let the devil in through a costume? And he started worshiping the devil. Something happened. Not only did he start worshiping the devil, when you start worshiping the devil, you start doing things that are against God. He became homosexual. Hmm. Y'all didn't notice it? He became homosexual. Interested with the human body and 
dissecting it. All kind of, when you let the devil in, you let all types of evil in. You see the LGD, LGT, whatever the hell they group called, try to disown the fact that Jeffrey Dahmer was one of them. He was one of them. But if the story was going correctly, he changed from being one of them to being one of the child of the most high gods. Wow. Amazing. You understand? Amazing. You know, most people that watch that and get so hateful and this and that. I done watched so many videos. It was hard for me to watch and hard for me to see what happened. I can just imagine the people that went through. I don't think nobody loved one deserved to be murdered or killed or anything, no matter what their preference are or whatever. But things happen in this world because of evil people. You know, the Bible says the wicked will destroy the evil. Evil will destroy the wicked. So it's a difference between you got wicked people, you got evil people. There's a difference. And evil people destroy, destroy wicked people and wicked people destroy evil people. You understand? Even the one of the one that's the, uh, the victim's mother was a Christian. She's ashamed to say what her son was when asked by the police. Why was she ashamed? Because she knew what he was was against God. You understand? Now that stink though. What if should have could? I know it's just what he say. What if? And then look, it's always about that dream of Hollywood or something. You know, Father Stewart, Jason, that dream of Hollywood too. Hollywood, trying to become a star, an actor. One of the kids, that's what his dream was. Chasing the dream. And you can watch the, the duality in a lot of things, you know, like his mother be praying the gospel and preaching the gospel at the teacher at the table. And then when he leaves, his sister will be like, hey, how's your relationships going? Like encouraging the fact of what he is. You see, that's why people embrace things. And people also embrace the fact that see, they worship Jeffrey Dahmer and that part of him like to be worshipped. That's most demons. They love to be worshipped. They want to make a name for themselves. Most people that are demonic, they have the same characteristics. They want to make a name for themselves. They want to be recognized. They want to be known. Well, the first commandment, no other gods before me. That includes self-worship. That includes worshiping of other people. That includes worshiping of idols. Now, I don't believe with the believe or agree with the Catholic Church. I really don't. I don't believe with praying to a statue. I really don't. I don't understand how that comes into play. But I cannot bow down to a Virgin Mary or a fake Jesus. I cannot do it. You understand? But God reaches everybody differently. I believe in that. And I asked a lot of questions I try to ask my father in regards to why does this happen and why does that. And I probably never get all the answers. But I know God can change people. And he can save people. If you listen to his voice and you let the prince of this world get his hands out of your soul. Because that's what a lot of people fall victim to. The prince of this world. You know, even pagans is a be like, Jeffrey Dahmer was evil. But he worshiped the same God as they did. Use the same pentagram as they used. It's crazy though. Am I saying all Christians are Christians? No. Even the Lord said that. Many will come to me in that faithful day. Have not done this and that in your name. Have not cast out demons in your name. Depart from me ye that work in equity. So you got to be very careful when you give your life to Christ and how you walk. But he told you something simple though. You love me, you keep my words. His words need to abide in you. Keeping words. I ain't talking about just, oh, I got his Bible. I kept his words. In this case, keeping his words is actions. Mm. Do you understand? Have you I done read plenty of stories about people being visited by preachers right before their death or giving their life over to God right before they died? I'm talking about like, and then they still go out and live a life for a little while. I have a few more days before they actually, God actually takes them. I wonder why is that? I don't know. There's a lot of questions I don't know the answer to. 
Let me pause and I will continue.